thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate that. So, um, Belinda, I really loved your story. And um, I think this is going to be different, but I, I think I'm going to go for it. Uh, you just gave me the right to do so. In 2001, I got a phone call to go home. My father was gravely ill. I got on the next flight and traveled to Zimbabwe. I arrived in time to see him while he was still alive. My father's dying wish was for his children to continue his mission to finish his work in Icosi Clinic, which is in one of the most underserved and impoverished communities outside of the major city called Bulawayo. So a few years later, I took on the challenge. I went to the project site in Igusi and stumbled upon something I'd never heard of before. They said, we don't want the clinic. We just need water. Give us water and leave us alone. <laughs> like a switch turned on. That's when it dawned on me that water was the most critical component. Water was the most critical need. Hi, my name is Lumbi Malambo, also known with my full name as Lumbimbi. That's a South African name because my dad was South African and my mother was Zimbabwean. I run a nonprofit called JB Dondolo Inc. named after my father who passed away right after I visited him in Zimbabwe. I'm here to talk about becoming a voice for water. And what does that mean exactly? It means becoming a change agent, an advocate for water so that everyone, and I mean everyone on planet earth has the opportunity to live a healthy and fulfilled life. So simply put, we need more voices advocating for water globally. You see, water is so complex and it is the most thing that is needed on earth and it is linked to almost everything in the world. But complexity should not stop anyone from understanding it. Because to me, the need for water is a human right issue. Why do I say that? Because women and girls must have access to clean water and private sanitation facilities to manage menstruation and maternity safely and with dignity. Without water, you, you tell me, where is the dignity in that? Here's the thing, the lack of access to clean water contributes to poor health for women, poor health for children, and poor health for families around the world. And research tells us that women are disproportionately affected by water crisis as they are responsible for collecting water and they have to walk miles and miles to get to the source. It turns out this lack of access to water and sanitation locks women in a cycle of poverty. You think about it, think about it. According to the United Nations, 2.2 billion people have no access to clean water. Wow. Over half of the global population, which is about mm, 4.2 billion people, right? Lack access to water and sanitation. 297,000 children under five die every year from diseases due to poor sanitation, poor hygiene, and unsafe drinking water. And this is the leading cause of child mortality. I repeat, 297,000 children under age of five die every year from diseases due to poor sanitation, poor hygiene, or unsafe drinking water. And this is the cause of leading, is the cause, is the leading cause of child mortality. One out of four 
healthcare facilities worldwide lack basic drinking water. Wow. These numbers are high. These numbers are high. And I ask myself every day, what do I need to do to help? What role can I play? How can I advocate for change? What can I do? So my organization, JB Dondolo, took this challenge. We listen to people. We listen to their critical need. We listen to people's critical need for water first in IGOSI. And that's in IGOSI clinic. And we worked with NAST, which is the National University of Science and Technology, to collect water and to collect sand samples and to test in the lab. And based on the lab results and the recommendations by NAST, we were able to install a clean water system, which is um, which services the clinic and also services the secondary school nearby. And this effort helped to reduce infant mortality and ensure that more girls and uh, more girls go to school. And I heard Beatrice say, uh, Gertrude say that about girls. So this is a critical thing as well. Without water, girls cannot go to school. They were thrilled and they were very thankful that we gave them water. And they even asked for more water systems to be installed. <laughs> and yes, you may ask, has your father's mission been fulfilled? No, my father's mission is still not yet fulfilled. But as we have seen, and as we have learned, everything depends on water. And little by little, I'm proud to say, JB Dondolo is on his path to accomplish his mission. Just recently, we started on another project in uh, Matobo Hills, another water project in Zimbabwe, where women and children are underserved and lack drinking water. As we navigate, we see that these water issues are, that we encounter are just in every community and more so in the rural areas, which is um, one of the areas that most people don't have access to. Water for most communities is like a dream come true. Like, you know, something you have like once in a while. And it really should not be that way. Just the awareness of our surroundings reveal more about who we are as a people and what we can do to be the voice for the voiceless, to voice for water. And we know that not everyone can do that due to certain circumstances. It is up to those who have access and who are able to, to be the change, to be aware, to speak, to use their platforms, to uplift others, to engage, to be present, and to do what? To be the people that we're supposed to be to represent. Water is the most basic and the most basic necessity, the most basic thing you ever find on earth. And just remember, everything depends on water. Our bodies are made of 80% of water, maybe even more. So how do we manage, how do we maintain our bodies? Because without water, how do we do that? So we have to engage, we have to engage many people. We have to engage to help those without the water. We have to become the voice. Here are three things that you can do, that anyone can do to voice for water. One, if you have no money and you have no resources, you can still be the change agent by getting in a, into a habit of asking people you know, what they need. Number two, if you have some money and some resources, you can find people who need water or donate bottles or jugs of water directly to those people and maybe to your neighbors and to the community. And lastly, if you are lucky enough to live in a community, 
to live in an area where people do not have this problem with water, then you can donate to organizations. And here are three organizations that work with water. One, water.org. This is a global nonprofit organization working to bring water and sanitation to the world. And that's giving people, women, hope, and children, health, and families around the world a bright future. Donations go to empowering families in need and uh, making sure that they have access to water and sanitation. Two, if you want to do something specific, I mean like really, really specific, then um, you may wanna think about a, a, an organization called Water for South Sudan, waterforsouthsudan.org. And this is by the former lost boy of South Sudan, you know, Salva Dut. They provide clean water and safe water and they improve hygiene and sanitation uh, practices in areas of great need. If you donate, they use the money to provide clean water to those communities without water in South Sudan. And lastly, my organization, JB Dondolo, jbdondolo.org, we remove barriers of access to clean water by providing water, not just water, but clean water to underserved and to impoverished communities in Zimbabwe and in the US. If you donate, we use the money to provide water and sanitation for those people in those communities. So I just want to say this water issue is a big issue and we should not be afraid to tackle it. We should not be afraid to stand up and speak and raise our voices to become the change agents, to become the people we're meant to be. It is not right by any standard, it is not right for anyone to not have water, for anyone to not have access to clean water. So in conclusion, I want to say, if we all become change agents for water, whatever our money, whatever our resources, and um, whatever it takes, then everyone, and I mean everyone on planet Earth, has the opportunity to live a healthy and fulfilled life. I thank you so much for giving me this stage to talk about water. It is something that is very passionate to me because I know what it means to live without water. I've never been in that situation, but I do see people every day that struggle with water. And I just want to say, if you can, please stand with us and be the voice for water. Thank you for your time.